I just have a couple questions. I was born Muslim. I was born into Islam. And I used to be super religious. Like I used to wear the hijab and everything, pray five mm-hmm. times a day. I met a lot of Christians and they used to ask me questions that I didn't know or I would tell them it's not true. Come to find out it is true. Someone had asked me, is it true that men can be on women? I yeah. said, absolutely not. Where did you find that? Oh, it's in your book. Show me. They would show me it and I can't really defend it. There's nothing I can say because it's clearly there. That is there. And other things about the Prophet Muhammad. Apparently, there's a lot of horrific things about the Prophet. Yes, there is. Too many. Can you show me? I want to know. I will show you from authentic sources because I'm assuming Palestinian. You were from a Sunni background. Uh, Yes, I am. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to sum up some of the things Muhammad did. Then I'm going to show you. And I have articles. And in my articles, I link to Muslim websites because Muslims will accuse us of lying, but then we quote Muslim websites. Number one, Muhammad sanctioned not only taking captive women and raping them, but married captive women and raping them, which is like the Old Testament where the God of Moses told Moses, if you find a woman captive because they go to war is inevitable. Mm -hmm. We can talk about who started the war between the Muslims and the unbelievers. The God of Moses told Israel, you find a captive woman, you cannot enslave her, you cannot rape her. You give her a month to mourn, and then you marry her and treat her as a wife. And if you divorce her, you let her go. And yet here, Muhammad comes in the Quran and the Sunan, he says, when you take women captive, you can rape them. Now, they don't use the word rape, obviously. They're yeah. not going to use the term. But if I ask you a question, if you got taken captive because there's a war mm-hmm. and man has sex with you, do you think you'd be willing to have sex with your captor? No. Absolutely not. Well, Islam says you have no choice. Once they capture you, you're their property. And he said you can even do it with a married woman. That's number one. Number two, I, I'm sure you know this, and it's not just with Muhammad, but the Quran sanctions this, and Islamic Sharia sanctions this. Muhammad not only took a nine-year-old to bed when he was 54, the Quran actually, I'm going to show you this step by step. I'm going to show you these three things. The Quran actually <laughs> permits prepubescent minors, young girls mm-hmm. who haven't reached puberty, to be married for men to have sex with them and divorce them to be married off again. That's in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's the second thing he did. And that's why to this day, in predominantly Muslim lands, not in the West, where Muslims know they can't do this and get away with this, and they try to present a rosy picture of Islam. Mm -hmm. To this day, in Muslim countries, if you go to Saudi Arabia, if you go to Afghanistan, wherever there's a Muslim majority, you'll have young girls, even before nine, being married off. And the only condition, and I'm going to show you this from authentic Mm -hmm. Muslim sources, not my opinion. I'm going to show you. I'm just going to show you the three points that I'm going to show you thus far. From authentic Muslim sources, the only condition, you know what the only condition is, uh, sister? I'm sorry? You know what the only condition is? No, I don't. That she can handle penetration. I'm going to show you where a girl as young as six, seven, or eight can be married off, and the man can have sex with her. But if she can't handle penetration, he has to wait till she's nine. Wow. I'm going to show it to you. No, Jenny, it's not consent. Jenny, please don't chime in. Thirdly, Muhammad abolished adoption. He abolished adoption. Do you know why he did that? No, I don't. Because he had married his adopted son's divorced wife, Zainab. And then people started making fun of him. Like, how could you take your son's wife? So then Allah abolished adoption saying, adopted sons are not really sons. So stop calling them your sons. So Muhammad, the pervert, took his adopted son's divorced wife, Zainab bin Jash. And his adopted son was Zayd ibn Muhammad. But then he said, adoption is now abolished. And that's why in Islam... And you can go to your chef and tell him, in Islam, can we adopt children? Say no, you can take care of orphans. I'm not saying you can't do that. But when an orphan reaches age, he cannot live in the house if he's not a son. Why? Because you know about the issue of mahra. I heard about that. And I was actually, I heard about this a couple years ago. I never really questioned it because I didn't understand. But wow, I did not know that. (laughs) Okay, but let's say you heard about that. How disgusting of a man that he would allow pedophilia, but then abolish a humane practice such as adoption because that means in muslim countries there are orphans who don't know who their parents are and there are couples who can't have children and because of muhammad orphans can't be adopted and raised as children and couples who can't have children cannot adopt ch- uh, children because of muhammad okay how would you feel about that let's say you're married and you can't conceive and there's an orphan who doesn't know who his or her parents are and you would love to adopt that child and love them as your own and you can't do it because of islam i would feel pretty hurt but i know I, i'm not def- defending anything but i know some people they have told me oh he can go and marry another wife absolutely not. I'm not that, means, that means you're a piece of garbage piece of meat because you're irrelevant what about you then 
Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I honestly, I, I did not know that. <laughs> hey, but what about, okay, so you can marry another wife and get a child. What about you? Don't you want a child? Yeah, I'm going to feel hurt. I'm do you, gonna... you want a competition wife who can give him kids and you can't give him kids so that she looks down upon you? No, I would not want that. So my point is, okay, he can marry someone. What about the orphans that cannot be adopted and be made part of someone's family? I think that's sad. That's what Muhammad did. So let me show you now the sources one by one. Let me show you Muhammad said you can rape captive women who are married. Okay. Then we're going to go online. You're going to see on sunnah.com. I didn't make it up. Okay. People don't think I'm making stuff up. So Muhammad was a very filthy, evil, immoral monster. But what the Muslims do, they focus on his good qualities and never speak about the bad qualities. That's why in Islamic law, Sharia, you are killed if you criticize Muhammad. How convenient, huh? Yeah. Why would you need to kill people who talk about Muhammad? If Muhammad is a pillar and he's a saint, what's there to say about him to discredit him unless there's a lot of filthy, evil, vile things about this man? It's like me focusing on the good qualities of Hitler and ignoring what a monster he was, right? Yeah. And I'm going to show you. You ready? Let's go yeah. step and Now, I'll give you links to the articles, but here. It's not the religion of rape and adultery, but the thing is I link to Muslim sources. So here it is in private chat for you, right? And here you go, right here for everyone else. Guys, focus and help me to help you. Don't be distracted. That means you're not listening. All right, here's the passage. This is Surah an nisa verse 24. Now, this is telling Muslim men whom they cannot have sex with, okay? Mm -hmm. Also forbidden are women already married. So I can't have sex with a married woman, right? Mm -hmm. Except those captives and slaves whom your right hands possess. Did you, you hear that? Yes. You're on the screen. So I can't have sex with you if you're a married woman unless you're my captive or slave. That means then it doesn't matter you're married. I own you. I can now have sex with you. Now, what was the reason this passage was sent down? Here you go. I have it here, but so you don't think I'm making it up. Sunnah.com. Sunnah.com. Here it is. Mm -hmm. If you go to that article I sent you, I'll link to Sunnah.com. So you can click on it. Bam. Does it say Christian.com? No, it, it says Sunnah.com. Okay. This is a Muslim site. So now let's see what it says. I want to see everyone see this. Look. So people don't think I'm lying. All right. Right here. It says the book of suckling. And there's an interesting story related to this. Uh, chapter nine. It is permissible to have intercourse with a female captive after it is established that she's not pregnant. And if she has a husband, then her marriage is annulled when she's captured. Did you catch it? Yes, I see it. Okay. So if you're married and I take you captive, your marriage is void. Why? I. Because Muhammad said so. Now watch here. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri reported that at the Battle of Hunayn, Allah's messenger sent an army out us and encountered the enemy and fought with them. Having overcome them, taken them captives, the companions of Allah's messenger seemed to refrain from having intercourse with captive women. Why? Why did they want to have sex with them? Because of their husbands being polytheists. They were like, all right, they're married. Their husbands are pagans. We refuse to have sex with them. Then Allah Most High sent down regarding that, and women already married, except those whom your right hands possess. I, they were lawful for them when their idda period came to an end. Meaning, no, don't worry about it. You can have sex with them. Don't worry that their husbands are kafir. Don't worry about it. Their husband's still alive. Just make sure they're not pregnant. So that if they're pregnant, it's not your child. So now plow into them and rape them. Now, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. The decent, moral, mar married woman consent to having sex with her captor and her husband's alive. Would she consent? Can you repeat that? Would a decent, moral woman who's married consent to having sex with her captor when her husband's alive? No. But it's not up to you because it says that when you're taken captive, here, your marriage is annulled. You're his property. Your opinion doesn't matter. Wow. Exactly. Wow. But this is not just Sahih Muslim, mm -hmm. which is Sahih. Right here. You can, the link is right there. But now you go back. Here's another one. Okay. This one here. Let me go here. Here's another one from Sahih Muslim. Let's go back here. This is another one. This hadith has been reported on the authority of Abu Sayyid al Khudri from another chain of transmitters. And words are they took captives on the day of Autas who had their husbands. They were afraid to have sexual intercourse with them. When this verse was revealed, and women already married except those whom your right hands possess, meaning don't have sex with women already married except those that your right hands possess. Don't be afraid, they're yours. Okay, watch here. This one comes from Sunan Abu Dawood, volume two, number 2150. So when we click here, bam, Kitab and Nikah. Do you know Arabic, sister? I do. I speak fluent Arabic. <laughs> okay, can I ask you a question? Yes. Nikah. If I forget the fact that they told you means marriage. Yes. And, and if I come and say I want to, and I use the word nikah, 
I want to do nikah with you. What am I saying to you? You're asking for marriage. That's what they told you. Do a little research. You're going to find that nikah is actually the F word. Really? Yeah, I'm going to show it to you. Wow. What Islam did, what Islam did, it took this word for F and then it made it a legal term for marriage. Because what do you do in marriage? You F each other. Sorry, I'm trying, I don't want to be graphic, but that's what it is. Yeah. I'm going to show it to you because when a man committed z uh, zina, uh -huh. okay, Muhammad said, did you F her? Did you do nikah with her? He wasn't saying, did you marry her? Mm -hmm. I'll show it to you in a minute. But anyway, this hadith is sahih, right? Yes. Al-Albani. Book 11, hadith 2150. All right. Abu Sayyid al-Khudri said, the Apostle of Allah sent a military expedition to Autas on the occasion of the Battle of Hunayn. They met their enemy and fought with them. They defeated them and took them captives. Some of the companions of Apostle Allah were reluctant to have relations with the female captives because of their pagan husbands. So Allah, the exalted, sent down the Quranic verse. And all married women are forbidden unto you, except save those captives whom your right hand possesses. This is to say that they are lawful for them when they complete their waiting period. But no, don't worry about it. Once you take them captive, you can rape them and sell them. Are you okay with this? I'm not okay with that. This is how many people experience Islam. If you go back to your history, originally you were not Muslim. Your ancestors would have been Christian. Muslims came, attacked your city, raped your female ancestors, took them captives. You have the blood of rapists in your veins. Do you know that? No, I didn't. Yes, you have the blood of rapists in your veins. See, here's a brother who tells you. As an Arab speaker, nikah means F word. F U is, and anyway, I'll show her that. Thank you, Robert, because the Muslims have been brainwashed. This is your legacy. Muslims went and attacked places and took women captive, married women, and raped them. Now, that the word nikah, so when it's kitab and nikah, literally it's the book of effing. And if you think I'm lying, here we go. One second. Okay. He was a very vulgar man. His language was filthy. Muhammad. W what would you think of a prophet that says, go bite your father's penises off? I never heard of that. I I I'm showing Muhammad this. Now, you see the Arabic here? I do. What does it say? It says, Anni Kuntaha. Uh, okay, Anni Kuntaha. Okay, now watch. Look what he said. Sorry. It's okay, that's fine. But I want you to tell me, does it mean marriage here? Because let's see what the context is. This is Sahih Muslim. I'm sorry, Sahih Bukhari, the Sahih collection of Al Bukhari. Ekram, mm -hmm. our related Ibn Abbas, said when Maiz Ibn Malik he had committed fornication, sexual morality, he wasn't married, came to the Prophet, he said to him, Perhaps you kissed or winked or looked. Maybe you didn't commit adultery. No, Messenger of Allah. He answered, he said, did you have intercourse with her? Using no euphemism. He used this word. And nit to ha. Does that mean married here? He's talking about someone committed adultery. No. It means, did you F her? Wow. And that's why it says he didn't use a euphemism. He just came out and said, did you F her? He didn't say, did you marry her? He was committing uh, zina. Yeah. You got it? Yeah, I understand. Now, you see how filthy, so kitab and nikah means the book of effing. So when someone says he wants to perform nikah with you, that means he wants to eff you. But legally, so they call it a marriage. Now, let me show you again his filthy, because it's all tied in because you're saying how filthy Muhammad is now. Watch Muhammad talking about biting people's penises off. Ready? Here you go. Right here. And now you see it's on sunnah.com, right here. Sunnah.com, sahih. Al Adab al Mufrad, that's by Bukhari, book 41, hadith 963. And I'll get you the links in a minute. Okay. Utay bin Damura said, I saw with Ubay a man who was attributing himself with an attribution of Jahaliyyah. He's speaking like the pre Islamic Arabs. So Ubay told him to bite his father's male organ and did not speak figuratively. I was explicit. In other words, he told him to bite his penis off. He wasn't being figurative. So his companions looked at him and said, It appears that you disapprove of it. So Ubay saying, Oh, are you? Upset that I told this man to bite his father's penis? Mm -hmm. Then he said, I will never show apprehension to anyone with regards to this. Verily, I heard the prophet say, whoever attributes himself with an attribution of jah jahiliyyah, then tell him to bite his father's male organ and do not speak figuratively. So tell him to go bite his father's penis. So Muhammad said, that's what you tell people who boast about their lineage. Wow. All right, so there you go. Here you go. And here again is Mishkat al-Masabih. Right here, mm -hmm. volume two, 
page 1021. Ubay bin Kab told that he heard God's messenger say, if anyone proudly asserts his descent in the manner of the pre-Islamic people, tell him to bite his father's penis and do not use a euphemism. This is your prophet. Is this your example? That's what the Muslims tell me. He's the example. I just sent you the link in the private. Guys, I just sent you the link. And here's a link to the other article where he says about, did you effer? Did you effer? This is uh, the beautiful language of your prophet, the beautiful example of your prophets. Number one, we establish he's a filthy mouth rapist. He had women raped, even married women. Did you see that? I did. Okay. Now, the other thing was pedophilia in Islam. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Now, let me give you the article there. Watch here. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you this so then you can go to your scholar and say, hey, here. No, it doesn't mean that. But wait. Ibn Kithir, Qurtubi, Tabari, Ibn Abbas, they all say this is what it means. Oh, okay, well, you're not supposed to know it. Because Muhammad said, you're stupid. You know that, right? Did. You didn't know he said that about you? No. He said that you women are deficient intelligence. It takes two of you women to equal a man. That's why the majority of you are in hell. What? Wow. <laughs> you didn't know that? I, I didn't. Like, I'm going to show <laughs> I'm going to show it to you. Okay. All right, now just let me go through this now. Here's another one. So go to the private chat, click on those links, save them. Okay. So you can go back and then reference them okay. so that they don't say I'm lying. All right, so hold on. But here, he's quoting. Here's the, here. Chapter 65, verse 4, is talking about the waiting period of a woman who's been married and divorced. So in Islam, you know, if you've been married, but you haven't consummated, there is no idda, right? Do you know this or no? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, let me show it to you. All right, here from the Quran, El Quran, El Karim. Here we go. We'll use two translations. The idda is the waiting period, meaning, okay, I, I divorce you. You got to wait three months, three monthly cycles, three periods. Yeah, I heard that. But, I heard about that. Here, look what it says here. Chapter 33, verse 49. So you can see it with your own eyes. Because uh -huh. now tell me how you're going to follow this religion. O ye who believe, if ye wed believing women and divorce them before you have touched them, then there is no period that you should reckon. So if I haven't touched you, after engaged to you, do you have to wait? Do I have to wait? What does it say? It's there is no period that you should reckon, but content them and release them handsomely. Do you have a waiting period in Idda if I contract to marry you, but I didn't sleep with you? No, right? Yeah. You yeah. see it, are you sure? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to look at Hilali Khan. Look to your right, Hilali Khan. Oh, you believe when you marry, believe women, and then divorce them before you have sexual intercourse with them, no Idda have you to count respect of them. So give them a present, set them free. I divorce a man's manner. So you're engaged. The man doesn't have sex with you. You don't have to wait, right? If he divorces you? Yeah. But if you've had sex, then there's a waiting period of three monthly cycles. But then they ask Muhammad a question. You know what the question they ask them? No. Okay. Uh, some of our women are menopause. And then some of the women we marry are too young and they haven't had their periods. What about them? They wait three months. Here it is. Chapter 65, verse 4. And this is about the chapter of divorce. And in case here, I'll show it here. Then I'm going to go to the article. I'm going to give it to you. Well, I'll look at Hilary Khan. And those of your woman, chapter 65, verse 4, of your woman as have passed the age of monthly courses, meaning menopause. For them, the idda, prescribed period, if you have doubts about their periods, is three months. Count three months. Now watch here. And for those who have no courses, why? They haven't had their periods. They are still immature. Their idda is three months likewise. You understand what that means? No. <laughs> You want me to explain what it means? Yeah, no, go ahead. Explain it. It's saying, all right, what if I marry a young girl? She hasn't had her periods. And I've had sex with her. I divorce her. How do I count her waiting period? Count three months. That's what it's saying. Right here, here again. Why do these girls have no courses here? And for those who have no courses, they are still immature. I married a young girl who haven't, hasn't even had her period. And I had sex with her. But now I'm displeased with her. I divorce her. Let her wait three months for the next guy to marry her. Oh, wow. Are you... Let me give it practically. As we speak right now, there are children in Muslim countries. This is being done to them. It's not a theory. It's happening in Afghanistan. It's happening in Saudi Arabia. It's happening in predominant Muslim countries where even a girl as young as eight, she'll be married off, and a man will mount her and then deflower her, and then he can divorce her, and then someone else can do the same. Now, for the life of me, you have some moral decency. Would you be okay if, let's assume... You were living a time when Muhammad attacked your village. He took your mother captive. Your father's still alive. And his men raped your mother and sold her off. Would you be okay with that? I wouldn't be okay with that. Would you be okay? They take your, let's say you have a six-year-old sister. Mm -hmm. And then Matt says, I'm going to marry her. 
And if she can't handle penetration, then I'll play with her. But at nine, I'm going to penetrate and deflower her. No, that's not okay. Oh, that's an Islam. And that's what your prophet did to Aisha. Oh, wow. Yeah, I heard about that. Well, I, show you. I did some studies about that. And they were just saying how, oh, it's a different time period. She really wasn't really? young. She really wasn't young. So uh, go ahead. <laughs> show me. <laughs> I want to show you. So if I show you, it says she was playing with dolls and on swings. And she was playing with dolls because she hadn't reached puberty when Muhammad took her into his bed and mounted her. She was playing with dolls and on swings. I'm going to show it to you. But before I do that, let's see what the Muslim scholars say about this verse. Are you ready? Yeah. Here it is. And I gave you the link. Yeah. Here you go. Who's the example given of a woman who hadn't reached puberty that was then married? Okay. Who's the example given? You want to see? Yeah. Aisha. Yeah. Here it is. yeah. You see it? Uh -huh. The Sabbath of Ali by Aisha Yuli, chapter 3, book of Tafsir. It says the Tafsir of Surah Talaq, meaning the chapter the of the... Word. Yeah. Mujahid said that if you have any doubt, 65 verse 4. That's the verse we read. If mm -hmm. you do not know whether she menstruates or not, the idda of women who do not longer menstruate and those who have not yet menstruated is three months, right? Mm -hmm. And then now notice the example here. For, again, Aisha Buli, Sahih Bukhari, chapter 70, Book of Marriage. Watch here. It's quoting 65.4, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what did here, what did this say in Bukhari? They don't menstruate. Why? Because they're young, right? Those who yeah. have not menstruated. Okay, now who's the example given here? I the health supplies to those who have not yet menstruated. And he made the idda of a girl before puberty three months. And then here. It is related from Aisha that the prophet married her when she was six years old and consummated it when she was nine. And she was his wife for nine years. If you see a 54-year-old man mounting a nine-year-old for nine years and then leaving her a widow where she can never marry again, you, do you believe this man's a prophet? Unfortunately, no. Then you just left Islam because that's what your prophet just did. And so you read it, Bukhari. But now, here are the scholars on the meaning of 65.4. Here you go. Fath al-Bari from Ibn Hajar al-Askalani, who wrote the commentary in Sal Bukhari. Mm -hmm. Look here. And those who haven't menstruated yet, he made the waiting period three months for those who have menstruated yet, which indicates that giving her into marriage before puberty is permissible. Are you okay with that? No. So then you're no longer a Muslim. Now let me give you more commentaries. Now make sure you click on the link to the private and save it so that you can go to your scholar and say, wait, look, here. What? Tafsir ibn Kathir. Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause. And that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her old age. See, she's old. So how long should she wait? She has no more periods. Her it does three months instead of three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based on the ayah in Al-Baqarah. The same for what? For the young who haven't reached their menstruation. Oh, so your religion allows you to marry young girls who haven't menstruated. Interesting. Tafsir al-Jalalain. And this is online. These are all online. You click on it, you go there, boom. It takes you right there, see? So I don't think we're lying. Tafsir al-Jalalain. And if you have any doubts about the waiting period, their prescribed period shall be three months. And what? Hold on. What does it say? Read that for me. And for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age. Why is Islam talking about young girls who haven't had their periods, being married, having a man to flower them and divorcing them, and they wait three more months to be remarried in case someone wants to marry them afterwards? Why is it even having this conversation? I honestly, I don't even have an answer. Exactly. Now here, this is attributed to Ibn Abbas. Some say this is not Ibn Abbas, but it's attributed to him. Now watch the underlying portion. Just read. Can you read the underlying portion? Yeah. What about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? Along with those who have it not because of young age, their waiting period is three months. They're too young. They haven't had it. Instead of saying, don't touch them. They're not mature. No, you can still have sex with them and divorce them and let them wait three months to be remarried. And here, Asbab al-Nuzul by Al-Wahdi, he's asked about the waiting period. All right. Muhammad is asked about the waiting period of the woman who has not yet menstruated. Okay. Now look at here. What's the answer here? He said, those who are too young, such that they have not started menstruating yet. Anyway, I'll read a few more. Then I'm going to show you where Aisha was playing with dolls and on swings when Muhammad took her to his bed and mounted her. And I'm going to show you where Islam says, you can marry girls even younger than nine, but there's one condition. If they cannot handle penetration, then don't penetrate. But when they're nine, deflower them. That means, okay, sister, how old are you? I'm 21. Do you have an older brother? No, I don't. Okay. Do you have a cousin that's in his 20s? Yes. Man? Okay. What would you say to your male cousin 
who takes a six-year-old to bed because Sharia allows it, six years old, and he takes her to his house as a wife. And yet, because she can't handle penetration, he plays with her, with his male organ, until she's nine and then deflowers her. What would you say to your cousin? I'd be disgusted. I would want him put away. That's well, That's religion. I didn't know any of this. I, I feel so lied to. It's really well, hard. You have been lied to. Now, I'll just give you... <laughs> And there's a lot more, but anyway, because this is all you can read on him. Those who have not mastered yet, meaning the young girl. What's the word? Asahira. Means young. And that's the Arabic. Yeah. The young girl. That's why she hasn't menstruated. Anyway, you you can go and read it. It's all there. No one's lying. These are the Muslim sources, but Yeah, no, I I, I see it right here. So now let me show you Aisha, and then I'm gonna show you. What the Muslims say, Islam QA, Salafi website, on what the Sharia permits. It's not simply their opinion. It's what the Madahib, the four schools of Islamic jurisprudence, Hanbali, Shafi, right? You have Malik, Maliki, all of them. Anyway, now watch here. Let me first go to Sunnah.com. I'm going to go to Sunnah.com. I only, all I need to do is Aisha and dolls. Bam. Boom. Aisha and dolls in the search engine. Bam. Look what pops up. Bam! Look at this. This is what? Sal Bukhari, Volume 8, mm -hmm. Hadith 151. Narrat Aisha, I used to play with the dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girl friends also used to play with me. When Allah's Messenger used to enter my dwelling place, meaning the home that he gave to her after he married her, right? Mm -hmm. They used to hide themselves. You understand what she just told you? She was so young that the young girls would come and play with her in her home. Young girls. When Muhammad would come in, they would hide because they're embarrassed. What is a grown man doing? <clears throat> Taking a young girl, putting her in a home, and then he visits her on a certain day to have sex with her. A young girl who's playing with dolls with her girlfriends. Let's finish it. They used to hide themselves. But the prophet would call them to join and play with me. What does it say about a sicko, 54-year-old, seeing a young girl playing with other young girls, playing with dolls? And he said, oh, go ahead and play with her. And then when they're done playing with her, they, they leave and then he goes and mounts her in bed. Now watch here. The playing with the dolls and similar images is forbidden. You know, in Islam, you can't play with images. But why was it allowed for Aisha here? But it was allowed for Aisha at that time as she was a little girl not yet reached the age of puberty. Don't let them lie to you and say she was mature. Okay. You caught it? Yeah, I, I see it. In front of you, right? Yep, it's there. Let's see, well, let me show you from Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. All right, this one is even from Al Adab Al Mufrad, which is again Al Bukhari, Book 55, Hadith 1299, Sahih, right? Aisha reported, right? Mm -hmm. The Prophet used to call her companions to her who were playing with dolls. That's how young they were. She and her friends were playing with dolls. Now, watch here. Let me show you. Okay, here. This one here. And I'm going to show it from Muslim. This comes again, Sahih. Sunan Toyots, Daif, it's weak. Sunan Nisai. Volume 4, Book 26, Hadith 3380. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah married me when I was six and consummated marriage with me when I was nine, and I used to play with dolls. What is a grown man at 54 doing marrying a young girl playing with dolls and deflowering her? I'm just so speechless right now. <laughs> exactly. And here it is, final one for this, and I'm going to show you what Islam says about pedophilia. This again is Sahih Muslim, Book 8, Hadith 3311. 3311. All you need to do is go to Sunnah.com, put Aisha and dolls. That's it. Aisha, dolls. Mm -hmm. Look at the chapter. It is permissible for a father to arrange the marriage of a younger virgin. Aisha reported Allah's apostle married her when she was seven years old. Because remember, these are lunar years. You know that, right? They're not solar years. She's anywhere from between six and seven. But those are lunar years. They don't go by the solar calendar. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's a lunar calendar and she's around six lunar years, you know what that means as far as the solar calendar is concerned? No, I don't know. She's much younger. Wow. Allah, Aisha reported that Allah's supposed to marry her when she was seven years old. See, this guy got it. You see? The guy said, Lunar, wow. So you got it, right, brother? He got it. Brother Justin, you got it, right? God bless you. You're a sharp man. May the Lord use me to bless you. And may the Lord use you to glorify his name. See, he got it. Lunar years means she's actually much younger if you go by solar years. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anyway, so now Aisha reported, married her when she was seven years old, and he was taken to his house. She was taken, as supposed to be, to his house as a bride when she was nine, and her dolls were with her. And when he died, she was 18 years old. She went to a grown man's house, 54 years old, with her dolls. 
alone. All right, now, Islamic pedophilia. I'm going to give you this article. So here it is, and I'm going to go to the website itself. Islamic pedophilia. Here it is. I wrote this article. More on Islamic pedophilia. All right. This is here, but I'm going to go to the site itself, which I linked to from the article. So, guys, you know what to do. If you guys are listening, you should be taking these arguments, these articles, mastering them and sharing them on Discord, on TikTok, on Twitter, on Pal Talk, because you see it's making an impact. This is what happened to this young lady. She heard these for the first time. She's rock. Anyway, so now here you go. We click on boom. Let me show you where I'm getting this from. So people say, oh, you're just lying. All right, here you go. Boom, here's the link. I click on I link to it in an article. Islam question and answer. General supervisor Sheikh Mohammed Saleh Al Munajid. Does that sound Jewish or Christian to you? It sounds neither. Exactly. It's Muslim, so they can't say he's lying. He's a kafir. Right here. Islamic question right here. General supervisor. Now watch. On acting and the ruling on marrying young girls. Get ready to throw up, sister. You ready? Get get ready to throw up? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Well, here you go. Right here, secondly. Marrying a young girl before she reaches the age of adolescence is permitted in Sharia. Say what? This is a 21st century website. It's not saying, oh, that was in the past. Saying, no, right now it's permitted. Indeed, it was narrated that there was scholarly consensus on this point. I'll watch. What verse did they quote again? At the log. The one I just read, right? Yeah. And the one that Muslim scholars say, yeah, that means you can marry a girl before she reaches the age of adolescence. So don't let them lie to you. That's what they'll do. No, that doesn't mean that. Oh, so all these scholars got it wrong. You got it right. No, you're a liar, dude. That's what it is. And then notice what the example they're going to give you. And those of your women, as I passed the age of monthly courses, those of your women, as I passed the age of monthly courses, for them, the idda, if you have doubt, is three months. And those, and for those who have no courses, i.e. they're still immature, their idda is three months likewise. Now, what example did they give you? Watch here. In this verse, we see that Allah has made the idda in the case of divorce of a girl mm -hmm. who does not have periods. Because why? What is it saying? It says she's young and has not yet reached puberty. I'm sure the Muslims lie to you, saying, no, Islam doesn't allow it. Alhamdulillah. Yes, it does. Three months. This clearly indicates that Allah has made this a valid marriage. So Islam says it is valid to take a young girl who has not reached puberty, deflower her, and call it marriage. Now, who's the example? It was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet married her when she was six years old. He constantly married with her when she was nine, and she stayed with him for nine years. So who was the example again? Aisha. So why do they lie to us and say she had reached puberty? I can't answer that. Because they're lying, and they're ashamed. If you like the work we do, please consider giving this video a thumbs up to help spread its reach and save more Muslims, atheists, and non-Trinitarians on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, we would love to have you on our team. It's completely free. God bless you all.